Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Are you ready? Hey everybody, it's Jeff. Well, uh, today in Maine is another rainy, windy day. Very windy today. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if some trees get blown down, uh, which means we probably could lose the power. <laughs> uh, especially in Vizi. There's a lot of trees in, in, in Vizi, uh, right along the power lines. Uh, I know they went through the state uh, over the last 10 years and they tried to move trees back away from the power lines all over the place. But, you know, hey, that's a, that's a impossible job because, you know, everyone, anyone who's li been to this state or lived in this state knows, I mean, half the, more than half of the state's nothing but woods. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, you, the only way you're going to be able to clear out the trees away from the power lines is to drop nukes all over the place, you know. <laughs> so, it's never going to happen. But... You know, when there's a, a power outage, that's a tree they missed. <laughs> but here's the here's the here's the catch to it: the more trees you take down, the stronger the winds become because there's less resistance to the wind. So then, you start seeing home damage and telephone poles get knocked. <laughs> so the winds, you know, it's just it's really. What are you going to do? What the fuck are you going to do? I mean, it's just the way it is, and, and Mainers will just have to adapt to these new uh, seasonal winds that we get here. And, you know, uh, and I just think that, uh, you know, I thought at, at one point, you know, things would get better, but now it looks like that's going to be here to stay now. So uh, if we, you know, we get a tornado, I wouldn't be surprised if one landed around here. We've already had small ones uh Right in this area, right here in VZ, and in Orno, uh, we had like really tiny tornadoes come down and maybe rip a house apart and then disappear. <laughs> you know, so the winds do get strong around here, believe it or not. So uh, you wouldn't think that. But um, I, I know in a previous video I had talked about uh, uh, Jody Hildebrandt and uh, Ruby Frankie. Uh, those two women that uh, were abusing their kids, who also had a YouTube page called Eight Passengers. And they're both in prison right now for that. Um, so right now everybody's kind of focusing on Jody Hildebrandt because she is, she's a Mormon uh, member who does work for the Mormon church by doing family counseling. Okay. And apparently she's got a reputation here of destroying marriages. <laughs> okay. And I found a, a video here that was put up a, a month or two ago, which, you know, there's a ton of videos about these two women here on YouTube. If you haven't looked, I mean, you can go page after page. Everybody's got something to say about these two women. It's like there's, there was so much truth about these women that nobody knew about. Now it's all coming out. And a lot of it from the ex-husbands of people that this woman, Jody destroyed. And uh, there's this one here, and it's a guy named Brian Tibbetts. And he has a two and a, 
two hour and 20 minute video on here and he basically lays out what happened to him uh, with Jody Hildebrandt. I mean, he starts off, you know, how he got into the Mormon church and then how he met up with Jody and then what happened to the, his marriage and the kids that he had uh, because of Jody. Very interesting, very, uh, I would say it sounds almost David Koresh style kind of shit, you know, what, you know, the things that Jody was trying to do. Uh, and I'm like, Jesus, I mean, you know, <clears throat> in the back of my mind was, as I was listening to this video, was like, whatever happened to people's gut feelings about things? You know, if I could sit here, you know, and, and understand that this woman was really demented, okay, uh, and really, you know, her methods really should have been the flag to everybody, Mormon or not, that, hey, you know, she's not really playing with a full deck here, people. You, you need to stay with... Uh, and then to find out that the Mormon church itself... Uh, has this friggin' racket going on where they got a whole lot of people like Jody that do what she does, you know, family counseling, but only for Mormons, okay? And, you know, they have these weird things, you know, like masturbation is a sin, and boy, they come down hard on that like it's murder for, with them for, for some reason. I, you know, I don't... See, sex is always like a big taboo in most religions. You, you notice that? You ever wonder why that is? <laughs> I mean, when if you gotta, if you have to make a species, you know, why would you make that the sin? You're, so, in other words, every one of us was born in sin because they, ooh, you know, they had sex. Okay, you know what the hell is that? Why do these people do this shit? Okay, why do these damn cults always target that as a means to, you know, it's it's about shaming people. That's what it is. Okay, they know there's a there's a cycle of shame out there that surrounds sex because you got pornography out there, you got all this stuff out there that other people can't stand. Okay, and so they use that to shame you. Okay, and that's the reason why we have this Victorian esque type thinking about sex to this day. Okay, it was really bad in the earlier days. I mean, I think we've kind of eased off a little bit on that, but there's still that that leeriness about about sex because the religions out there keep turning that into something bad when it's really just part of biology okay you know yeah there's sex addiction but people get addicted to all kinds of damn things you know what i'm saying too much of anything isn't good for you okay but they, it depends on what you're doing with it with sex with alcohol with drugs you know what i mean you know what i'm saying it all depends on what you're doing with it but the thing here is that in this situation with Brian Tibbetts, they, they really use that against him a lot, okay? And by all accounts, Brian's not a bad guy, okay? From if he was telling the truth and what he was saying, you know, he's a decent guy, okay? He didn't deserve the shit that was being put on him to make him be, feel guilty to, you know, to go crawling hands and knees to the Mormon church to get help, okay? That, that was ridiculous, that was beating down somebody that's already a member of their cult, but trying to reel them in to tighten their grip, you know, and that's what it's all about with them. And on top of that, what, what he shows is that there's a lot of money being given into this thing. You know, I mean, Jody's not doing this for nothing, <laughs> okay? She's getting paid for that, you know, for what she does. And all these other idiots that are out there using the education of being a psychologist, you, weaponizing that in order to feed the monster, which is the church, the Mormon church, okay? Uh, you see how people can twist knowledge to be hateful, okay? Uh, but that's what she's doing. That's, that's why it makes psychologists look bad. It gives the whole th community a bad name because of a few bad apples that are out there deliberately using what the tools they were taught as ways to manipulate people to their cause. <laughs> All right. So, uh, so Brian Tibbetts tells us, you know, what happened with his marriage and how Jody played a really bad role in that. It destroyed. And to this day, I mean, he, his, you know, he never, his marriage has ended, but he's married to somebody else now and he's happy as hell with her. But, 
Um, the fact that it, you know, it ruined his kids. He had kids, and it, you know, they were caught in the middle of this damn struggle here between him and his wife, and his wife uh, trying to, at some point, say, "Oh, well, well, let's let's try to get back together." And then she all of a sudden kind of says, you know, I, "I don't like this anymore." Okay, let's be separate again. Okay, it sounded like his ex-wife was dealing with demons of her own uh, about the Mormon Church, and it made her unable to accept another person and what. You know, and their way they live and stuff. I mean, if you if you're married, you have to accept the the good with the bad on both sides. Okay, not everybody's perfect. Everybody's got flaws. But if you can't stay together and accept those flaws, then you shouldn't be married in the first place. Okay, so you know the the girl, the woman he married initially, who was in the Mormon Church. I mean, I think he should have known that. Hey, there's certain things about me she's never gonna accept. But Jody. But her bringing that to Jody, Jody, you know, lit a fire under that, escalated it, made it worse, okay? Told her, encouraged her, you need to separate from him. That's the same fucking thing she was telling uh, uh, Ruby Frankie and her husband. Same damn thing, remember? Say, oh, well, your husband's a sex addict. You need to separate. You need to, and, and as soon as they were separated, then she just kept made it harder for, uh, Jody made it harder for them two to come back together and reconcile. She didn't want them coming back together. Okay. And then the fact that she, uh, in Jody's house, uh, Frankie's kids were being abused there and Frankie didn't seem to give two shits about it because if she knew about it, she'd have yanked them out of that house. Okay. And she may, she probably was in on it herself, you know. Because Jody is that kind of a manipulator who really draws you in. She's got a magnet around her for people who are feeling bad about themselves. You know, they, they're de generally depressed, okay, looking to be something, somebody. You know, they, they can't just, you know, live their life. They, you know, they, it's like they have no direction. And this Jody seems to offer them that kind of direction that they want. But they get pulled into the gutter with her. And that's what happened here. I'm not saying that Frankie's innocent of the things that she did because, you know, she was involved, you know. But the fact is that she wasn't the only couple or her, you know, and her husband that, that Jody ruined, okay. Apparently she did this a lot. Uh, and that's her stick. So... Uh, like I said, I, it's, uh, it's really, uh, really shocking in a way, you know, that, <clears throat> you know, I had seen like two, two minutes of her, Jody, and just listening to her interview with the police and stuff like that when they arrested her and everything, uh, just the things that she was at, you know, the things she was saying, the way she was acting, she didn't seem like she was quite there, you know, very, uh, unbalanced in a way and then as she sat in that courtroom okay and just listened to the judge throw the sentence at her after he berated her for the things that she did and she just sat there with no expression on her face just sort of detached from it uh that was that to me seems like well that's probably how she was thinking is that no i'm a victim nobody gets it okay She's sitting there thinking nobody understands me and they don't get me and I'm a victim. You know, so it's going to, whatever they say is going to go in one ear and out the other. And that's exactly how she sat there. Just sit there and just, you know, you know, and blank, never reacted, never showed any remorse or any tears. Like a lot of times when the verdict, no, she was completely removed from, from the courtroom, uh, as that was being, all that was being said to her. Okay. Uh, that's a that's a perfect red flag right there that, that shows you know just how stubborn you know she is with her beliefs and stuff and how she self righteously thinks that what she did was right. Okay, and then she goes on on this tirade later or something and saying, "Oh, the people don't want us raising our kids anymore, and everybody's in you know you know it's all everybody except her." Okay, everybody's at fault except Jody. Okay. Jody's beliefs were never put in quote. Why? Because the Mormon church kept uh, appeasing her for years, letting her stay in her fucking job, ignoring the warning signs themselves that she was flying off the fucking deep end, okay? They're just as much to blame, okay, in my opinion, 
because they knew probably better than anyone else that Jody was a bad apple, but they needed her in there, okay? She probably even convinced them that there was nothing she was, that the things that she was doing wasn't wrong, you know? Who, who, who's to say? But all I know is that, you know, she, she really is a master manipulator, and, and, and if anyone's going to land on their feet after they've served their time in prison, it's going to be her, okay? She's going to be all right after she spent time in prison because while she's in there, she's going to use those skills again. She's going to go in there. She's going to start converting people, prisoners, to being Mormon because that's all she knows. And that's, that's, only, that's what's going to make her feel good while she's in there is to see if she can't sucker more people into her religion. God help anybody else that follows her because they're all going to be led right off a cliff just like Jody, I mean, just like uh, Ruby was, Okay. But she's not going to learn one fucking thing while she's in there about what she did being wrong. You think she's going to turn over a new leaf? No. <laughs> she's not going to turn over a new leaf. Uh, it's pretty clear to me when you just, the things that, how she was behaving and, and the things she said that, you know, she's done this pretty well for a long time and it's set in stone in her mind. She's not going to change overnight or 15 years or however long she's going to be in prison. She's going to come out, land on her feet, and she'll be right back at it. Maybe the Mormon church won't want nothing to do with her, but that doesn't absolve them of any of the culpability. And the fact is, is that, uh, you know, she'll just do her own thing, you know. I'm just, I just hope that people out there will remember this woman's name. And if you see her and she, start, and she starts talking her thing, they sucker you into something, just get up and walk away. Don't even give her the fucking cur uh, the courtesy of a, I'll see you later, okay? Just turn your back on her because she's broken. Jody's broken. She's broken mentally. She doesn't even know it. I mean, she needs to have a psychologist to analyze her, <laughs> you know, and find out why she's doing the things she's doing because she really is, you know, she's really out there. And uh, you'll find that out when you watch that video here. And I put it on my uh, uh, ordinary talk list of videos for you to uh, to find so that, so you won't have to go and search you know type in the name just go on there it'll be you know either above or below this video uh, that you're watching uh, it should be right there uh, and if you can't find it just message me and I'll and I'll just put a link as a response so you can just click it but it should be there and if you have the time okay uh, you know like Today would be a good time to watch something on YouTube because it's terrible outside. But if you got the time, you know, you don't even have to watch the whole thing to get the idea. You could, you know, watch, you know, an hour of it and, you you know, you'll get a pretty good picture of what Jody Hildebrandt is. She's She's got a grift. She's like Donald Trump. She's got a grift. She's played it well for a long time, but she got caught. And you always get caught when you're doing something that ain't moral. And, and uh, her selling herself as being the most moral of the Mormons, you know, she, she really isn't. She's, she's broken. And it's too bad that while she's going to be in prison, nobody's going to try to help her out with that, with these issues, but that's just how it is. Prison, they say, oh, well, we, we can re, you don't rehabilitate while you're in prison. That costs money, right? State's not going to spend any money on you. If you murder people or you, you, you destroy marriages and shit, they're not going to spend money on you. You're, they're just throwing you in bars, behind bars, in a, in a friggin' little room, okay, probably with a bunch of other people, and you're going to have your, your food, and that's it. And, you know, it's just, there's no rehabilitation there. It's just, it's just wasting time so you can come out and start the cycle all over again. I mean, who the hell ever learns anything while they're in prison, really? These people... <laughs> they just they're broken when they go in there and until they can address the root cause of why they're there they never get help okay and there's damn few people in prison that can really offer decent help for the, for people like for Jody in, in this instance that can turn her life around and understand you know why things are wrong that she did you know <laughs>
This is me. This is me. Curtis, I'm a lobsterman in Maine, and this is me. I'm Ruth McLaughlin, and this is me. I'm Eric Hopkins, I'm an artist, and this is me. This. This. This is me. 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 This is me. This is me. This is me. At the end of the journey, the main thing is you, original. Kevin McCarthy abandoned you, Ken Buck abandoned you, and Mike Gallagher just announced on Friday that he's going to resign. The majority is down to just one. Seems like Republicans are in complete disarray. Feels like these guys are basically walking out and giving you all the finger. Hope future Speaker Hakeem Jeffries sent you a nice fruit basket today. I filed the motion to vacate today. The clock has started. It's time for our conference to choose a new speaker. What person that can pass a competency test would want to be the Speaker of the House? Uh, the Freedom Caucus right now has been a disaster. I feel we are seeing yet another tantrum by a tiny faction. God help us. Uh, the House Republican majority is a dysfunctional embarrassment. It's like trying to herd cats. You think your job in life is to grandstand and complain while the other team runs over you? This is why conservatives call the GOP the stupid party, by the way. Charlottetown coming to Halifax November 6th to the 18th and St. John November 20th through the 26th. So, uh, uh, what's coming up here? Uh, <clears throat> on Monday, uh, Donald Trump is going to 
go on trial for his uh, hush money cover-up payment to hide affairs at, you know, ahead of his uh, uh, 2016 uh, presidential election. Uh, and you know, let me read this article from AFP here on that. And it says here at the, in the headlines, written by Andrea Bambino, okay. Five things to know about Donald Trump's first criminal trial. Uh, he will become the first former U.S. president to go on trial when jury selection begins next week. Here are the key questions ahead of the landmark trial. What is Trump accused of? Answer, as Trump closed in on victory in the 2016 presidential election, adult film star Stormy Daniels was paid 130 grand to keep quiet about an alleged 2006 sexual trist with Trump. The payments made by Trump's lawyer at the time, Michael Cohen, were revealed by the Wall Street Journal in January of 2018. Prosecutors have seized on the concealment of the payments as legal fees. Legal fees. In the Trump Organization's accounts when Cohen was reimbursed as, as the heart of their case. Prosecutors say Trump, quote, concealed the reasons for these payments, which clearly were paid in order to influence voters, unquote. Former prosecutor Bennett Gershman, now a lecturer at Pace University, told AFP. A New York grand jury indicted Trump in March of last year over the payments made to Daniels, whose real name is Stephanie Clifford, with the ex-president charged with 34 counts of falsifying business records. Uh, the case is being heard in a state-level court. Uh, next question, what is the case for the defense? Answer, when the scandal broke, then President Trump denied any relationship with Daniels, insisting he knew nothing about the payment, eventually claiming it was to thwart attempted extortion. Uh, he pled not guilty and attacked the trial as a political witch hunt. Trump's lawyers will question the reliability of ally-turned-enemy Cohen's recall uh, and insist the case has no merit. Prosecutors will show that the Trump camp has Form covering, uh, has form covering up embarrassing affairs with money based on two other similar payments. Uh, next question, who will decide the case? Answer, Trump's fate will be decided by 12 jurors backed by six alternates selected from a randomly chosen pool of Manhattan residents. Each will be questioned about their view of Trump and their ability to remain impartial with the defense prosecution and the judge all able uh, to bring challenges. The process could last up to two weeks. Jurors uh, who must return a unanimous verdict will remain anonymous for their protection. Next question, could Trump go to prison? Answer, Trump could theoretically be jailed if he is found guilty with a prison sentence of up to four years for each of the 34 felony counts. However, the judge has the discretion to impose just a fine or alternative sentences, including probation, acknowledging 77-year-old Trump's age, and clean criminal history. Uh, lack of remorse could go against him, but legal challenges uh, to any sentence would likely delay sentencing. Conviction would not stop Trump's presidential run. Next question, how long will the case last? Answer, the court says around six to eight weeks with hearings scheduled every weekday except Wednesday, meaning that if guilty, sentencing could happen before the November polls. A variety of legal challenges and maneuvers could delay that time, timeline, with Trump's lawyers stepping up their appeals and challenges in recent weeks, already securing a delay of the trial from March 25th to April 8th, uh, 15th. Unlike other uh, major trials, like that of O.J. Simpson, who passed away this week, by the way, uh, from cancer, uh, Trump's uh, will not be televised according to New York state law, which, in my opinion, is a mistake. Uh, if there's any reason at all why uh, people shouldn't see this trial, 
about Trump, especially over this. I mean, because there's no secret, secret information that's in danger of being disseminated here. Okay, we're talking about hush money payment, and uh, people really should should be aware of this. I mean, look, you know, there's many more trials to come, and and we're moving into November for the election. If there's any way for people to remind themselves why Trump is such a bad apple here, okay, let's remind them through these trials, okay? What's what's the problem with people being there and, and, and listening to this in the courtroom, but it's not okay to televise it? You see what I'm saying? Isn't that a little bit of a double standard here? I mean, come on. If you're going to let people in there to watch this thing in the goddamn courtroom, then there's, there's no justifiable reason to say we can't have this televised. The system is already there to televise this fucking thing. It's been there for decades, if you ask me. It was just, you know, you got courtroom TV, you got CNN, you got the uh, all the various channels. I mean, come on. There's no reason why we people shouldn't hear this. I mean, this is a guy who's going to have the... Con who might end up with the power of this entire nation at his fingertips. The, the fucking nuclear football, the codes to launch the missiles. This is a guy who's running to get that job back again. Okay? Anything that comes out about this man is news. And it's appropriate for people to know this news. Because he's a candidate. If he was a nobody, I don't think anybody would care anyway. But because he's not a nobody, and he is a somebody, whether it's infamous or famous... It's right that we should know about it because, hey, we're, it's going to be up to us as to what this man's fate's going to be come November. Why, why, why should there not be, you know, you know, anybody to see that? Okay. I think you know the media really in in the justice system bend over backwards too much for this son of a bitch. Because if Biden had was in court right now for something, you goddamn well know, as well as I do, that the cameras would be right in that courtroom and we'd be hearing everything being said. All right? You know this. But because it's Donald J. fucking Trump, okay, who the hell, you know, who is this guy that everybody's so afraid to smear or, or so afraid to reveal, you know, uh, to us? Who is this guy? You know, it ought to make you wonder. People talk about the deep state in this country. Well, if a guy like that can get through the justice system uh, without a fucking uh, hurdle and be treated the way he is, don't you think that's a sign of a deep state uh, agent there or whatever you want to call him? I mean, you know, this is only going to perpetuate that fucking theory that there is a deep state out there. And yes, Donald Trump would be that would be a perfect candidate for that because he can dodge every fucking bullet you fire at him for when he does something wrong. Deep state, people. <laughs> That's your deep state right there. Donald fucking Trump is your deep state. All right? All this other crap that the baloney here that QAnon puts out and all that is just that, baloney. Okay? You want to know what the deep state is? It's about people making money corporations. That's your deep state. When they buy off politicians and they get them to do things against you and I, deep state. Donald Trump has a, got a good long history of doing shit like that. Makes him perfect, uh, the perfect king of the deep state. So, like I said, this, this, this trial should be televised for all Americans to see. There should be no nothing withheld here because uh, a lot of the crimes he committed involve all of us as Americans, okay? Stealing from the IRS or whatever you want to call it, okay? That's stealing from you and I when he ain't paying his damn taxes. The state of New York, I mean, they should be out there screaming their bloody head off. Uh, you owe us money, okay? He owes the state of New York, you know, maybe a billion plus out there for money he ain't paid in taxes. That's people that didn't get benefits that they should have got because of uh, a handicap or an accident or whatever, or retirement, you know, that's, they take, you know, the, oh, the social security system is running out of money. Well, why do you think that is? Because not everybody's paying into the system. If they were, there'd be ample money in there for the next 20, 30 generations, okay? 
There's no reason why the Social Security money should be depleted of funds unless people are not paying into it like they're supposed to. And who do you think owes them more money? The poor people at the bottom end, who the working class, or the people at the top end, the millionaires, the billionaires, the folks up there, the, the corporations that are, that are finding ways to cheat paying their fucking taxes. Who do you think owes you that damn money? Okay? Why do you think the Democrats are always after the 1% in this country to pay their taxes? It's because they don't. The, the evidence is out there. People find the, the friggin' numbers all the time about what they paid this year in taxes. Zero. <laughs> you know, or less than what they should have paid. It's a, it's a goddamn, uh, it's a racket. It's a fucking racket. It's just like what happened to Wall Street before the crash. You know, things got out of control because they were starting to find ways to cheat the system. Okay? They were, they were starting to find ways. Oh, let's, let's give people loans so they can buy stocks. You know, oh, what's wrong with that picture? <laughs> you know, what could possibly go wrong there? They played on the system so much that it cracked and fell apart, okay? And when people tried to regulate it to bring it back, oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Well, it's, you see what I'm saying? They, want it, they wanted it there so they can continue to rip it off. Well, there, there's your mentality of the upper class in this country. They're only there for themselves. They don't care about the rest of us that have to bear the fall of what they do, okay? They don't care. But of course, I'm not telling you folks out there anything you don't already know. It's just frustrating that it goes on. You know, since 1928, you know, Black Thursday or whatever, you know, since then, we're still at it. There's the still the rich versus the poor all over again. We ain't learned nothing. That's the one thing about history that keeps coming back is, you know, that we learn about. People never learn from history, <laughs> you know. We don't do the right thing or take the right precautions to do the right thing. That's sad, but that's what that's what goes on, you know. And, you know, if we were more vigilant about things, you know, I think that, you know, the, the business community in America would be a healthier environment. It would be less risky, would be more trustworthy. I mean, that's why the, the older generation from that period to this day don't really trust banks. You know, they would, they'd hide their money in their homes and safes and under the mattress and stuff because the bank screwed them over big time. That's why they live that way. They'll never, they, they never trust the banks, you know. And for some reason, that never bled over into future generations after that. For some reason, the trust came back and people started taking loans again and putting their mortgages up and then we had that crash in 07 08 the housing market and people started losing their homes all over america because they were using their homes like atms and when the bill came when the bank came and said we you need to pay us now everything in full they couldn't do it they ain't got the cash <laughs> they're still paying off the debt in payments but then they can't pay the whole thing off all at once you see and that's how they lost their homes the banks weren't going to give them break no, no, we want that money now. People have been living in their homes, in the same home for 25, 30 years, all of a sudden being kicked right out the fucking door. Well, there's blame to go around, yeah. The banks and the people that trusted the banks. You see? I, I remember the commercials on TV during the 80s about, oh, go... Uh, use your home, your home equity loans and all. You know, I remember that. Almost every damn commercial in the commercial breaks was banks telling you to go and use your house to get cash so you can buy, you know, swimming pools or go on trips or go, you know, do this, do that, buy this, buy, you know. Um, and then don't worry about it. Just pay it. Yeah, sure. The interest payments alone are making those banks billions across the country. You know, that's what they want you to do. They want your interest money. They don't care about the principal, okay? And they certainly don't stress paying everything off now. They don't want you to pay your loan off right off. Oh, Jesus Christ. Then all of a sudden, they're not going to get all that interest money back, you know? <laughs> that makes you a bad risk. That's why your credit score will, will be hit, you know, or whatever, you know, because they don't want you to be without debt. They need you to have debt so they can make their money. Why do you think so many banks get opened up all over the damn place? You know, it's worse than ants making anthills. I mean, they're, they're just, they're everywhere. Everywhere you go, 
about 80% of the buildings standing today are banks. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, they're, they're making a fortune. I mean, I think, I think the only thing that outflanks banks would be hospitals, okay, and clinics. I think that would be the only other thing, maybe. I'm not, I Maybe not. And, and in some ways, the two of them are kind of integrated too, isn't it? I mean, because banks like to get involved in any th enterprise that's making, making a ton of money because they can get some of that. So I'd like to think that, you know, or I think that, you know, there's a lot of intertwining going on there with that. But, uh, but yes, people really didn't learn anything from that. And here we are today where there's fewer homeowners than, than there has been in a long time. And we have a, home, uh, a housing shortage at the same time, which is weird, <laughs> you know, because what's going on is all the homes that people lost, they got picked up by the banks, turned into something else. The property, the, you know, you know, they, they couldn't get rid of it. So they, what they do is they sell it, somebody buys it, turns it into an apartment. Okay. Um, and that's what you got. You got a lot of apartments out there, but damn few homes that people can afford to buy because they're so expensive now because the banks want their money back. You know, they want, they want that money. And uh, I thought I'd never live to see the day where, you know, one of the priorities of, of people as they leave home uh, isn't to buy a home. I hear from young people all the time the, the interest, the, 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 the logic of buying a house is really illogical. <laughs> okay. Uh, I've, you know, it's, it's like the reverse of everything that I've been taught growing up is being spouted back to me from other people are saying no buying a house is a bad investment okay and you know and they lay out the reasons why it is and why you know it's it you'd have to have a very good job in order to have it i think the mindset today is that a home is just a, an albatross that nobody wants to hang around their neck for the next 35 years because the banks make it damn near impossible to get out from under them when you get a house okay and the upkeep on the house, the property taxes on a house, all the things you wrap up together, it's like nobody makes enough money to even be able to make a house payment, let alone to take care of the rest of it. So that's why everybody today is moving into apartments and stuff like that, and there's not enough apartments to go around. And that's what they mean by a housing shortage, okay? There's not enough apartments to go around. and, and and in some places, the landlords are asking an unreasonably high price a month for their, for their apartments. Okay, so that's become a problem now. And uh, so there's things that's got to be done, you know, in that. Uh, but, you know, <laughs> but, it, but as far as what, you know, with Donald Trump here, I mean, Trump, he's... Uh, his shit starts on Monday on this, and people, like I said, really have a right to see this play out. They need to know. That way there's no rumors and no half-truths being spun out of what they see, okay? Uh, when you don't tell people what's going on, all kinds of uh, hogwash gets created, all kinds of QAnon, conspiracy crap starts up, you know, because nobody has any verifiable facts that they can say, well, this happened, we saw it, okay? There's nothing you can play against that. And that only play, that only helps Trump in the end when you do shit like that. So how effective this trial is going to be with Trump really hinges a lot on how, uh, on what people know about what went on there and what we find out, okay? They're not going to find out a lot if they're going to keep this hidden uh, from people. And people are just not going to know everything that they ought to know. It's, it's important we know our candidates Democrat or Republican, it doesn't matter. If, if one is going to court, we ought to know that too. As you remember, like I said, they're both, the Biden and Trump, they're running for the office. That's the most important office in the land. We have a right to know. It's like their resume. We need to see their fucking resume. All right? As it is. And whatever crimes they're involved in, we need to see that too. So we can make, you know, the best choice. Unfortunately, we only get two choices. I mean, that's like, ooh, democracy. We get two choices. <laughs> you know, uh, someday that's going to be talked about and maybe ended there. The two-party system really needs to be fragmented up and, you know what I'm saying, in my opinion, because people need better choices. 
you know, I think. Uh, so that way there's, there's uh, you know, uh, more feeling that you have more control than, than uh, over who you pick. That there's a better chance to find a good apple there somewhere, you know. <laughs> okay, so that's it for today. I hope everybody has a, a great rest of the week. Uh, today's Friday, so uh, have a good weekend. And I will talk to you all again at some point. So subscribe, comment, and please keep your ears open for COVID news or any sicknesses out there. Uh, prepare yourself for them. And, uh, you know, treat each other nice. You know, don't step on each other's necks. Don't spite anybody, you know, or anything like that. It's best just to bite your tongue, you know, sit down, drink some tea, watch some news or whatever. Uh, read a magazine, read a book, read something, you know, just don't focus so much on the negative, okay? It makes living easier. So take care. Everybody.